Welcome back to the Classical Architecture Workshop. I'm Professor Brandon Rowe, and in this video tutorial, we're going to go over the Doric order, but specifically how to draw the entablature. The entablature is that beam that sits above the columns. Once again, in this uh, tutorial, we are using William Ware's The American Vignola as our guide. Uh, the Doric order is one of those five classical orders, um, and so we're going to get started. But before we do so, a couple of things that we should be aware of. Um, one of the things that we talked about early on is that what makes the Doric order unique is these uh, elements called triglyphs. The triglyphs are directly centered above the columns themselves in the entablature and uh, in these uh, in uh, excuse me in between these triglyphs we have what are called metopes um, in these uh, two plates that we see here from William Ware um, the one that is shown here on the right hand side is what we call the mutillary Doric and this is the version that we will be drawing today. So here is a sneak peek at that drawing that we'll be producing um, in terms of drawing a mutillary Doric entablature. So let's go ahead and get started. As we've done in the other videos, you're gonna need a couple of tools for this drawing tutorial. Uh, you're going to need a 45 degree triangle, architectural scale, rolling ruler, uh, builder square, uh, or a triangle that's a little, little bit larger, uh, your writing utensil, and sketchbook or a piece of paper. So as we th begin to think about the mutillary Doric order, um, we already kind of explained one of the major things that separates this from some of the other orders is this element right here called the triglyph. Um, we're going to be drawing what is called the mutillary Doric. And so because of that, it has these projections. So it's almost as if these beam ends continue up and project outward. And these we call the mutuals. Um, one of my video subscribers asked, you know, if we could do potentially a reflected ceiling plan of the entablature um, or an isometric type drawing. Um, this video won't necessarily cover that, but I wanted to show an example of what that actually looks like. So here in a 3D type view, right, perspective, you can see those triglyphs as they start to emerge out. They, they actually pop out from that main um, freeze plane, um, and then those uh, mutuals also follow that same projection. And on the underside of those, we have what are called uh, gutai. And those gutai, it's a six by six, so there's 36 of those. Um, and so, you know, translated, they really mean uh, drips or drops. Uh, so, some used to believe they were drops of blood or pegs that held uh, the beams in place type of thing. Um, but anyways, this, this is that mutillary Doric reflected ceiling plan um, and that 3D view of that according to Vignola's, uh, excuse me, William Ware's plates in his American Vignola. So wanted to just kind of show that so you can get a glimpse in 3D what's really happening with the Doric uh, mutillary entablature. So with that, we're going to get started. This overall drawing, the scale of it is going to be similar to the column base and column capital that we did, the enlarged versions of those, um, meaning that every three inches uh, equals one foot. Um, and so as we think about that, right, just as we did before, here I've got uh, 
excuse me, um, this is the, the uh, Skinner, uh, more slender portion of the column, but uh, D, as we may recall, was three inches. So the entablature in itself, in and of itself, is two D in height. So that's six inches in total. Um, and then, as we set up this drawing to fit on an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper, uh, we're going to make it overall in length about nine and a half inches. And so, to get us started, I'm going to use my Builder square here. And place this and start drawing a couple lines. So I'm going to create a horizontal line for the very top here. Pull this down just a little bit from that top. Okay. So I'm going to put a tick mark here at the nine and a half, and then I'm going to go across. To nine and a half inches and then I'm gonna go ver vertical down six inches and that should give us um, what we're looking for so this six inches <clears throat> while I've got already got the ruler here I'm gonna go ahead and put a tick mark at the three inch mark because I am going to split this into two with a graphic scale um, so that is going to be 2D in height for the full entablature. So if I get my uh, rolling ruler here, I'm going to create a little uh, small graphic scale parallel to that previous one. Um, and then I'm going to scoot off a quarter of an inch. I'm going to put another graphic scale there. I'm going to do this for the full duration or the full length, excuse me, of the entablature. And that next one, we're essentially going to subdivide into eight equal parts. So if D is equal to three, and I'll, I'll, I'll put this here um, for your reference. Um, so we're going to be separating this into 2D. And then this next one, we're going to subdivide that into eight parts. Um, you may recall when we were doing the block order that we we did the same uh, practice where we subdivided the entire entablature into eight equal parts. And we do that so that we can then subdivide and get some of these main lines. Um, for example, two if we go two of those eight parts, that gives us the length of the architrave, which is one half D. We go three of those, that's three fourths D, which is the frieze, and then another three fourths D, which is the cornice in and of itself. All right, so now that I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and use my um, three quarters inch scale because that will enable me to subdivide this into eight equal parts so if I bring this up here so I'm going to place a tick mark at each number one two three four five six seven and eight Okay, we've got that in place. So, as I said, two of these will then become our architrave. Another three will become our frieze. Three more for the cornice. So we're going to go ahead and strike a couple lines so that we can have uh, those major points, uh, separations for our entablature all marked out. So if I get this straight here, Just carry that line through. I'll probably do an, a little extender on here. I want to do a little dimension stringer so I can label some of these items. So that upper third will be our cornice. We'll go down another three. 
this will be our freeze. And the bottom here will be the extent of our architrave. Okay, so if I use this to create an extender out here, same with this one for the bottom of the architrave or the bottom of the full entablature itself, and then up here at the top. And at the very top of the full entablature. Okay. I use my rolling ruler here. Create a little parallel dimension line. Put some tick marks on this as if it were a dimension stringer and we will call this bottom third the architrave and that is one half D uh, the middle section is the freeze F-R-I-E-Z-E -E, and that is three-fourths D And then the top portion, which is also 3 fourths D, is the cornice, C-O-R-N-I-C-E, and that is 3 fourths D, our diameter. Great. So now that we have that, um, there are a, a couple things else, uh, other subdivisions that we are going to create uh, within that, that three subdivision that we created for the cornice itself. Um, unfortunately, none of these three divisions actually carry through um, to be able to use those for the overall height of the cornice. So we need to subdivide this into four parts. Um, and then here in the freeze, we're not going to use any of this uh, information to subdivide anything else um, at that point. But then the architrave, we need to subdivide this one into three parts uh, because with the architrave, you have what's called a lower band, an upper band, um, and then below the triglyphs, you have the regula, the guti, and then the tinea, which uh, ties it all together. Um, and so to get those subdivisions, we'll need to create some other uh, little graphic scales and subdivide those surfaces. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So I am going to grab my triangle here. Well, actually, I'll do my, I'll do this bigger one to help me subdivide a few things. Um, my rolling ruler is not working great because it goes off the page here. So I'm going to create another little graphic scale. I would do it just for this bottom portion of the architrave and then the top portion of for the cornice. I'm going to pull that off slightly an eighth of an inch or so. So like I said, for the cornice, we're going to divide this into four parts and in the architrave into three parts. Um, but while we're at it and in the mode of creating graphic scales, we're going to go ahead and create a couple more. Um, as you can see with this four divisions, we're going to create another two graphic scales side by side of that. Um, and then same on the architrave. These ones are only going to be on that top third of the architrave. Um, so let's go ahead and create those. So I'm going to go another uh, 
quarter of an inch off, plus or minus, for this graphic scale. Um, and then this one, like we said, is only going to be this upper uh, third on this side. Um, this, this other side is going to go through the whole four divisions. Pull that off an eighth of an inch. Make sure we're staying parallel there. Okay, and then this last one um, we'll pull off just another little ways here. Make sure we're straight. Um, and then this one on the architrave, um, we can just do the full extension, that upper third. Uh, we'll come back and subdivide that in just a minute. And then this one, we'll just go all the way through. Um, we'll come back and subdivide this one as we get to it. Make sure we're staying parallel. Okay, so we've got that. All right, so to subdivide this bottom one first, let's let's jump into this this area. So we are going to use, um, if you remember, uh, if D is three inches, one half D for the architrave is going to be um, one and a half inches, and so that's that length or two of those, right? Um, and then so if we subdivide one and a half inches into three, that's going to give us a half inch uh, each one. So if we use our half inch scale here, I can uh, quickly subdivide this into three parts. And uh, one of which I will carry down to the next graphic scale because uh, that half inch will continue down there. And so if I'm using my half inch scale still, if I use it on the side with all the teeth, um, that e equally subdivides that into half. Um, so I can use that to actually subdivide the next portion into two. So I'm going to write my two there. And then the portion right below that, um, we're going to subdivide that into um, three. <clears throat> so just one half of that into three. Um, for this one, I would actually use the quarter inch scale. It's a little easier to subdivide at that point. I'm going to erase some of this that I do not need here. Okay, so right here, if I place the quarter inch with all of those tick marks there, um, that will enable me to subdivide it because there are 12 little markings there. So every four, if I place a mark, that will enable me to subdivide that into three parts and get what I need there. Okay, so that is the extent of our architrave um, divisions that we're going to need. So let's go ahead back up to the top now and subdivide the cornice itself. So as you recall, this first one is going to be four uh, subdivisions. Um, and as we do that, uh, we are going to need to use a, a nine. If you were to measure this on a normal uh, ruler, that would be nine sixteenths of an inch. And so to get this, I'm just going to use my 1 16th scale here. Excuse me. And um, so just above the middle part, which is 8 sixteenths, I'm going to go 9. Make a mark. I'm going to take that down. Um, go another nine sixteenths. 
take that down and 9 sixteenths and just measure that last one should be 9 sixteenths as well. So that gives me my four equal um, uh, divisions there. Um, before we do anything, I'm going to take some of these lines across for this one in particular. We're going to take a line across for the top division, the second division, as well as the third. So all three of those uh, tick marks that we just created, we're going to take a line through horizontally through the full entablature. So let's do this for this first one. Take that through. We're going to take through the next one. Keep on going down. And that third and final one. So we've got four uh, divisions for that full uh, cornice area. Uh, the reason we do that is just to carry through some of these lines. It also enables us to then subdivide some of these other surfaces. So um, we'll start from the bottom going up. So this, this next one, we're going to subdivide this one into two parts. The one above it into three. The one above that, the third one, is into three as well. And then the top one is into two parts. Okay, so as, as we uh, do this... Um, we are going to use our 3 16th inch scale um, to do some of these subdivisions. So if I use my 3 16th, 3 over 16th scale here, and I subdivide this into half, so if I'm looking at my scale here, it gives me, um, it lands on the three. So if I subdivide that in, into half, so I've got one and a half using my 3 16th scale, that will enable me to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the top as well. That one and a half. And then for the three, um, as you know, it's already at three, so we got one, two, three using the three sixteenths. So each of these spacing is going to be three sixteenths of an inch. As we subdivide that into thirds, and same with the one below it. Just like that. Okay, um, well, next, um, we're going to subdivide this uh, lower one here um, into another three parts. Um, we're going to skip this one right here and then go into this the next uh, tier um, for the three divisions. We're going to subdivide some of those elements um, and then um, uh, go ahead and uh, uh, skip this one with any new subdivisions and then subdivide some of the top parts. So let's go ahead and get those subdivisions um, there for that. So this uh, first one, if we're using our 3 sixteenths inch scale, I'm going to use the one with all of the teeth marks. So I'm going to go 3 sixteenths up. Oh, excuse me. One and a half up. So here you can see it's actually one and a half up because we carried that two through. And then that, because it's one and a half, we've got a tick mark at each half point. So we can easily subdivide that into three equal parts. So I'll write a three here. I'm going to erase this next part because we don't need that. Um, in this one where we just subdivided it into uh, three parts, we're going to carry some of those through. Um, and this, uh, this bottom one, so first I'm just going to go ahead and mark those uh, subdivisions down. OK. 
screw those through. Um, so uh, these upper, oh, excuse me, these lower two, th these are going to be divided into two parts each. So that one's easy for us because we just use the tick marks for that. Um, this top one, however, is going to be subdivided into three parts. And so for this, we're going to need all of those teeth again. So once again, there are 12 divisions there. And so every uh, four uh, teeth marks, we're going to put a line. So we can subdivide that into three parts. And now for this uh, last portion, um, we're going to erase this next graphic scale because we don't need that one. And then up here at the top, right, we had a subdivision uh, at one and a half. So if I carry that through there, um, this top one is going to be um, in two, but the bottom one is going to be three. And so the th three one, we just place a tick mark at each of these uh, divisions for the one and a half. So that's three divisions. And then this next one is in two equal divisions. So as we do this one, here, so it is one and a half. So if we put one right there in the middle of that, that will give us that division. Okay, so we've done a lot of dividing now. Now's the time that we take a lot of these lines across. So we're going to shift back to our rolling ruler here. Let's start uh, going from uh, the bottom up. So let's start at the architrave, the very bottom of it. And we are going to go up to that first third division, carry a line across. Uh, we're going to keep going up to that next third division. Uh, this one, we're going to carry a line across um, very lightly because there's only a portion of it that we're actually going to use. Um, and then as I'm going up where we've got, you know, dividing that in half, I'm going to go ahead and carry a line across for that one all the way. And then as I go through, um, that portion becomes our, our tinea. And then uh, this division where we did three, I'm just going to go to that first top third there and carry a line across lightly as well. Um, because that becomes our regula and then right below that is our guti. So we, now we've got our architrave uh, nicely subdivided. Um, like I said, in the freeze portion, we're not going to really add a whole lot of horizontal lines. At this point, uh, we're going to shift up to uh, the cornice area. So I'm going to start first at the top, and then I'm going to take this down. So I'm going to go first to uh, this division, this very first one that we created. I'm going to take that all the way across. This is the uh, uh, fillet portion of the uh, cymatium. Um, then I'm going to go down until I get to these three subdivisions that we created. And um, for that, I'm going to go down two of those. I'm going to strike a line. And that distance there will actually give me my uh, Sima recta molding. Now let's go back up, make sure we're being parallel. Come down. So this next one is we've subdivided that uh, kind of corona portion into thirds. That top third, we're going to carry a line across for that. Uh, we're not going to do anything else with the other two thirds. 
now we're going to go down to these other subdivisions that we created. So this first one where we subdivided it into three, um, the top third, I'm going to strike a line for that portion. And this is going to be another uh, fillet mold. Um, that two thirds as it goes down um, beyond that, we're going to strike a line for that. That is going to be the bottom of our Sima Reversa. I'm going to skip um, this next uh, two subdivisions, um, but then as we get to the, the second one, um, right where it divides it in half, I'm going to bring a line across. This is acts as kind of the drip mold, you can see here, line as well as uh, this line for um, the goo tie underneath the mutual itself. And then as we go down here now um, for this last one where we subdivide it into three parts um, right there at the top I'm going to carry that line across the top of that. Um, and then the last one is going to be I'm going to go one-third for that three divisions carry that line across uh, very uh, to give us that information. Okay, well, I think that's all of those subdivisions that we really needed. So, the next thing that we're going to do, um, since I've already measured this ahead of time, right, we measured it to nine and a half inches, and so this is the edge here. Uh, the tip top part of our uh, cornice the furthest most extension so we're going to start from there and go backwards towards the center line um, usually you would actually create the center line and go the opposite direction um, but since we've already measured this out uh, we're going to do it in this fashion so with this, um, that dimension is essentially going to be four and a quarter of an inch. So if I take my normal ruler here, four inches and a quarter, I'm going to place a tick mark there. That is going to be my center line. So I'm going to use my square or triangle here to really get a, uh, a vertical line that's perpendicular to the top and because this is the center line as we've done in the past it's going to be a dash dot dash dot so as you may recall this center line is important because this is how we draw the column going up um, and so you can see here on this drawing on the side that the column is indeed centered on this. And as you go up from there, right, the, the neck of the column um, changes in width instead of the full D, it's 5, 6 D. And that face, if you dash that up, it always lines up with the face of the entablature. Um, so that's an important uh, thing to note. So, um, Instead of going ahead and redrawing the column capital, uh, I've already just done the math here for us. Um, so if we go an inch and a quarter from the center line, that will give us this face. Um, the equivalent of that, you know, would be, so if this is 5, 6 D, um, uh, half of that would be 2 and a half over 6 D, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and add here one and a quarter marking here. I apologize for some of that sound. That sounds like they're doing construction on the other side of my wall here. So one and a quarter. 
just make sure we've got that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and strike a vertical line here. somewhat lightly. I'm going to do the full length of the freeze. I'm going to skip um, this next portion, but I'm going to just do a, a dash line as we bring it down. And the next portion where we're going to do a solid is just at the very bottom portion of the architrave. Okay. So this bottom portion, we're going to go ahead and start labeling a couple things. This bottom is the lower band. Of the architrave. The portion right above it is called the upper band. And this is really just a fascia molding that we have. And we'll label some of these other things in just a moment. All right. So from there, we are going to use our 45 degree triangle. Um, we're going to use this because um, here at the bottom, if you can see, right at the top of the column, if we draw a 45 degree line across there, that gives us actually the center point of a second triglyph. Um, and that's that's Im important um, to get with our triglyph spacing. But if we run one the other way, it actually gives us the extent of the tinea, this uh, uh, fascia type molding that runs across here. And so uh, we're going to run this triangle on, on both sides. So first, we will do it on the left hand side so that we can get um, the extent of, of this. Um, I'm going to just do a dash line here. OK. Perfect, and I'm going to use my right where that 45 hits the top of the freeze. I'm actually going to draw a dash line down as well, just because that indicates the center line of one of the triglyphs. Okay, now let's do this on the opposite side here. Creating a 45. I'm going to dash this line just as before. Okay, and so that intersection there with the top of the architrave, if I carry a line down from that now, that will give me the face of that first molding um, at the top of the architrave. And that is called uh, the, the tania. So I will call this out right here. T-A-E-N-I-A. -E the tania. All right. So this next portion is we're going to mark out, you know, where the gutai is, um, as well as uh, the extent of the projection of this upper band. And so to do that, we're going to need to subdivide this distance, the square that we just created, into three parts. Um, so uh, you know, one of the ways we can do that is, um, you know, it doesn't really come out to a nice dimension. So just as we've done this diagonal rule in the past,
And to do this, I might actually need to bring this um, vertical line down just a ways. A light line. And what we'll do is we're going to subdivide this into three parts. So to do that, I'm just going to use my scale, any which uh, number you want to use. Um, here I'm using the 3 16 of an inch. And so there, instead of taking it to the actual number 3 here, um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using 1, 2, 3 tick marks here, uh, which is really 1.5. Uh, do a diagonal and subdivide that diagonal into three equal parts. So if I place this here, I rotate my diagonal until it really uh, lines up with that one and a half. And actually, that's pretty darn close actually at, at a vertical, uh, excuse me, at a horizontal. So I'll just strike a line. I guess I didn't need to do the diagonal rule. So 3 16 of an inch. And I will subdivide that into three equal parts there on the bottom. So once again, that was using the 3 16 inch scale. So if I go ahead and strike here a couple vertical lines for this thir first uh, third, I'm going to do a vertical line for um, the upper band. It's going to go all the way to the bottom of the tinea. That is going to be that extent. So that is how my profile starts to emerge. Um, and then that, right, that third lines up with the tinea. And now with my uh, gutai, um, if I was to take half of that uh, outer third there and to strike a line up, and I'll do a vertical line just for that uh, division there and take that across horizontally. That is my regula. Put a little leader line here. R E G U L A. Um, and then right below that, if I was to take my other division there, just bring that line up. Um, this is kind of flares out slightly. This becomes one of these in the side profile view. This is the gutai. G U T T A E. Okay. So there we go. Got some of that information there. All right, so if I take this back across, just make that a little darker, more pronounced, so we can see what's actually happening. That's the extent of what we need. So the nice thing now is, um, you know, this dimension, if you, if you really wanted to measure it, um, what it comes out to because everything derives from the diameter, right? So this is actually 1 12th, uh, the extension of the tinea is 1 12th of D. And then right here, um, this upper band, if we continue this up, um, it's actually 1 24th uh, D. So we'll go ahead and carry that up. So if I use my square or triangle, take vertically this, and that's going to go all the way up to that bottom there of um, 
the cornice itself. And so that dimension there is 1 24th D. Okay. All right, so we've now got the side profile for half of the entablature. Um, what we need to do now is we're going to draw out the triglyph itself. Um, the triglyph is actually, uh, you know, one half of D. And so if you recall, if D is three inches and we cut that in half, that's one and a half inches. So if we use our three inch, uh, well actually we'll use our one and a half inch scale here. And if we are to place a tick mark on either side, center this on the six, and we'll take this up to the top as well. Great. Um, and then, you know, in this upper portion here, where the mutual, because we're doing the mutillary Doric, so this mutual pops out, that actually lines up with the triglyph. It's the same size. Um, so if we go up to uh, this portion here with the three and the two and uh, put a mark on either side of that, that will also give us the extent of that mutual. Okay, now we're going to just connect the dots here. Okay, we'll do a vertical line up. Um, the extent of this next line starts, you're going to go one, two, three up. And so um, this little guy right here, as well as that next one, that is the extent of the mutual because this is that drip edge. So it'll look something like that. I'll take a ruler and do the other side here as well. Okay. So there we go. We've got one triglyph. Now, um, in order to find this other triglyph over here on the side, you know, what do we have to do? If you can see here in the drawing, I've got a 45 degree uh, a diagonal line going up, creating essentially a square for the metope. So remember the whole freeze is three-fourths of an inch, or excuse me, three-fourths D, and so it is a perfect square, each metope, that goes in between the triglyphs. So, if that is a perfect square, if we draw 45, that will give us that edge for that perfect square. So if I place my uh, triangle here, and just as I did before, I'm going to dash in this line, because it is just helping me get another piece of the puzzle. So if I wanted to check this, right, we could um, use our three inch scale to just kind of measure this. Right, so here I've got, excuse me, I'll do it on this side. It goes to the nine. So if this was in real life, that would be nine inches. So perfectly square, that's right about where it was, where the diagonal came. Okay, so I'm going to strike a vertical line there. Okay. 
Before I take my uh, ruler up, I'm going to add this little vertical portion over here on the side as well, because I will have that triglyph there. And actually, since my triglyph is one and a half inches, if I use my one and a half, do that right. Place that there on the other side. It looks like my um, horizontal line is slightly off. Excuse me, my vertical line for the mutual. So I'm going to correct that. Okay. Let's go ahead and fix this and this one above it. all about making these course corrections because if we don't things will not be proportional to one another so we'll do that there fix that guy in just a moment there we go we've got our two uh, triglyphs adjacent to one another and you know now that I'm looking at that guy, it does not look. The other one in slightly off. In terms of being perpendicular. Okay. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and fix this one right here. All right, there we go. Now we're back on track. Okay, so this whole triglyph, like I said, um, its dimension or width is one half D. So we're gonna label this, this is the triglyph. T-R-I-G-L-Y-P-H and its measurement is one half D. Um, if we continue that across that dimension stringer then we have the metope M-E T O P E, meta P, and that is three fourths D. Okay. So with the triglyph itself, um, it is subdivided into 12 separate parts that you can see here. Um, to get those 12 subdivisions, uh, we're going to use our eighth inch scale. So that works out nice um, uh, in terms of uh, its subdivisions. Um, so if we strike a line across here um, and create a small little graphic scale, what you'll see is that using your eighth inch scale, every tick mark will enable us to get 12 divisions for this full thing. Okay. Um, up here from the top, one thing that we're going to use is our 45 degree triangle. From the top corner, the upper right corner of the triglyph, we're just going to draw down or dash a light little line there, 45 degree line. Uh, because when we bring one of these lines up, that is going to give us the height of each of these uh, areas that is carved into. 
So if we use our triangle or square, I'm going to bring a line up from this first uh, division of 12 that we created all the way from the bottom. I'm going to bring it up until it hits that 45 degree uh, angle there. And I will bring it across a horizontal line. And then right down from it, I'm going to just mirror this triangle and uh, bring that in because that part is carved. It's going away from us. Um, if we took that line across, just eyeballed it, <clears throat> excuse me, what is happening is um, on the ends there, it's kind of carving into it and uh, and almost about half of that distance, the 124th that we had on the side there, you're going to get a little sliver like this um, that, as it's uh, carving away. Okay, <clears throat> so now that we've got that first one, uh, we're going to have a flat portion, and so a triglyph means three, tri. Um, and so if we go over two from there, <clears throat> two of our 12 divisions, bring that vertically up. We'll bring it just to that uh, same part that we uh, created earlier. Carry a light line across here to guide us and how far we should take those up. Um, so we go over uh, two, that will be a flat portion. And now this is going to uh, concave in um, the triglyph at carve in. So we're going to place a, a, a vertical line on the next one over. Next two, that is. skip over where we have the words there. Okay. Um, this next one, we're going to skip over the center line um, because just like this one had a flat part with two, uh, they'll be the same and it will be centered right on that center line. So we'll go over one. So essentially here, we will have a blank spot, right, for this triglyph. We'll have one right there in the center, so we can erase that. Um, and then as we keep going over, we'll create that next indentation. So we'll go over another one. Another one. And then this last one we're going to skip to and then go to second to the last marking of 12. And we'll do the same thing on this side at a 45 degree. And then with these, <clears throat> um, you could use your triangle for this to get it precise. But I'm just going to eyeball it. Um, you essentially have a triangle up at the top because that's all being carved in there. That is the extent of our triglyph. So this would be then repeated over here on the side, but uh, we're not, for uh, time sakes, we're not going to do that at this point. <clears throat> so. Um, a, a couple of things that we're going to do now is uh, we are going to um, continue with uh, some of our profiles as we go up um, in the cornice area. So we've got most of this uh, bottom part done, but actually before we uh, jump off this ship, let's continue this line down from the triglyph, so right below the tinea. We will add a line here 
from the triglyph that continues down on either side. And I apologize, there's the construction again. Um, and then this next part uh, for the, the gutai, just as we did on this other side, we went in a little ways and, and come out. Um, there are going to be six of these gutai. Um, so if I'm measuring them, uh, they are roughly going to be two thirty seconds of an inch. So I'm going to use this to kind of uh, give myself a, a guideline here. There will be three of these on either side. Okay. And they what they do is they taper up into the regular area. last one got a little wonky but that that gives you the extent of what we're trying to create with the good time that extend down um, that regular though does not actually continue across it stops at just the triglyph area and so if we continue this from the bottom the other side right it would stop right there and then it would have another Gutai going across. So we will erase that. All right. So that about wraps up this bottom portion of the mutillary dork. Now, <clears throat> as we continue upward, um, you know, we, we created this face of the freeze itself. Um, we're going to continue a dash line up from there um, because that's going to be important for us. And uh, while we're at it, we are going to continue this center line up. We'll label that the center line. Okay, so we'll continue that face up. We're going to dash this in. Um, and then continue this guy up. So we have that extent of our dimension string here. So the nice thing is what we're doing here is uh, this distance from the face of the freeze and the architrave and even the column face down below over to the extension of that full corona is actually 1D. And so that that is what we are going to be marking here. So if I add a horizontal line across here, dimension stringer, uh, this is 1 D, three inches. And from here, from this corner here, going upwards, we're going to add a 45 degree triangle. This is what we've done in the past. Let's see here. Make 
sure I can get this right. Okay. Dash in this line here, going up. And you'll notice it doesn't go to the full 1D. Uh, that's because this dimension here, and I'll just kind of lightly draw this in. This dimension is 1 quarter D, or 1 fourth of D. Um, that's that's important because as we go that 45 degree, we're going to take a line down. That's going to give us the face of this uh, drip edge for the, the mutual itself and allow us to get some of these other uh, molding profiles. So if I take this line down now, I will dash it in. Okay. All right, so um, a couple of points here that you should be aware of. Um, one is this area here, which is the drip edge right here. If we follow this along until it hits the corner right here, oops, excuse me, right here, we are going to take a vertical line up and that is going to give us this edge here. So that is our uh, first step. So we'll take that up. Um, and then the nice thing is that if we take a 45 degree uh, angle here, we enable this to just keep moving down for us right at that top part of this side. Uh, we'll also do it on this side of the mutual here at the top as well. And then we will do the reverse on the other side. The triangle, excuse me, the mutual. And then over here, this last one. And what those 45s give us is really uh, the extent of this um, fillet mold here at the top. So we'll go vertical down on all of these, or that 45 touches. And then underneath that, uh, kind of centered in between, it, it juts over a little bit. Um, we have a, 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 excuse me, a Sima Reversa molding that is supporting that. And if you remember, a Sima reverse is essentially two circles stacked on top of each other um, because all of the weight is pushing down and causing this top part to bulge out. And it's the inverse on this other side. And we're just eyeballing this. We're not going to be uh, using our compass. It's so small. Um, but the nice thing is that that continues over um, across here. So if if th at this point, right where we uh, created that uh, 45, um, right here, that line would actually be solid. Because this is the edge of our mutual and that little drip edge. And so if we took a 45 degree from there as well, have a vertical line that comes down, uh, we would have another Sima Reversa supporting that. Okay. 
Okay. So um, the nice thing now that we've got this edge here, uh, we can start going backwards and getting some of this other uh, um, the ovalo molding, this uh, bed mold here, um, and a couple of other things. So, so with this. Um, right at this point where it intersects if we go right below that uh, the mutual area uh, what we're going to do is create a half excuse me a quarter circle or a quarter round molding over low there to tie in right below that edge and right there at that intersection, we're going to go vertically down. We're going to go over until it hits that uh, 45 degree again. And we will go down vertically from there. And bring that over. Okay. So with that, um, in this area here where we've got all of these gutai, um, there's six by six up when you're looking at the reverse ceiling plan of it. Um, we will see six in profile from the side here, and that dimension is one half D. So one half D is one and a half inches. So if we take a line across here. mark that up on that first uh, area there and then if we uh, were to subdivide this um, just as we did on the bottom um, as you may recall it was two thirty seconds of an inch so if we place this across here leaving a little space in between each of these we will have six of these goo time and then at this last part here um, it actually goes up and has a little curve on it and we call that the drip edge. I'm just going to thicken up some of these line weights here to be able to see this a little bit more clearly what is happening with the gutai. And I can erase those up. Uh, well, I guess we can leave them. That's fine. Just leave those. So this dimension right here then this is our bed mold and this is one half D. I'm gonna erase some of these other lines now. That extended beyond. Okay. Great. So we, we've now come up about a third of the way up. So right here at the bottom, um, in order to get this extension for uh, what is called the corona, and before we move on, let's let's label this. This is the mutual M U T U L E. It's the same as this portion right here. Um, as we as we go up for the corona, we're going to take a forty five degree up to the top. And what this uh, will reveal to us is a couple of things. Okay, 
So right where it intersects at this portion, if we were to dash a line down there, um, that gives us that face of the corona. And you'll notice it's very slightly off um, uh, from that other fillet that we just created. And then from there, we've got another uh, Sima Reversa. right above that with another uh, flat fillet mold and then we get to the Sima recta that is going to cover the rest of the remainder of this area so we're just eyeballing this in but the Sima recta as you recall it flares out at the top it is that crowning element um, and so this this area we call the cymatium, C-Y-M-A-T-I-U-M. And then right below that, we have the corona. So not just the coronavirus, right, but the corona portion. Um, and then beyond that, uh, the thing that we'll do is you can see here in between uh, these mutuals um, they're actually they do not continue because we don't have a continuous drip edge it's it's just at the portion where the mutual protrudes from the face of the entablature and the freeze itself so we can erase those and that is the extent of our Doric Mutillary uh, Entablature. So once again, um, thanks for joining us on the Classical Architecture Workshop and stay tuned for as we move forward into some of the other orders. Thank you.